Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to talk about a module called Semantic Views. While you may have noticed when working with views that your source code gets a little heavy, um, there's all sorts of extraneous divs, just like a ton of extra stuff, and you don't really have complete control over it. So what a great module is, is called Semantic Views. Uh, and I'll show you this right now. Um, the project is drupal.org slash project slash semantic views. And what semantic views does is it really aims to give you more control. Um, you can see this before and after. Before, here's sort of this extraneous divs, and then after, it has exactly what you want, and pretty much only what you want. It doesn't solve all of the problems with views' sort of um, extraneous code, but uh, it, it definitely makes it a lot more bearable. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm actually going to click into a view that I already have made, um, and I'm just going to show you exactly how to set up semantic views. Because if you've used views and everything, um, there you know it's it's not adding really thing extra except for giving you a little bit more control. Okay. So semantic views is under format. If you click your format here, and we've gone over things like slideshow or unformatted list. Um, we have there's also quick tabs from when you installed quick tabs in one of the previous ones grid or table uh, but after you install the module semantic views you'll also notice this semantic views for the format okay so you want to select that have it to be you know all your displays or whatever you need it to be and then you also want uh, under show you also want this to be um, semantic views fields okay so let's get into the difference between what each of these is doing and what they can do for you if you go to settings under the semantic views format, you can see what your options are. Basically, it gives you some, some grouping. If you want to group a field, uh, you can group your, your grouping title. You can set exactly what you want it to be. By default, it's set to an H3. You can give it a class here. So this is your list. This is like the thing um, above the row, right? If your row is going to be a list item, then you would want this to be you know, a UL or an OL, whatever. So this is deciding what that over, that larger thing is. You can even have it set to none. Let's say if you want each of your rows to be a div like we have here. So like I have it set to none, I have no class on it. And then for our row, I have a div. Notice how it says, uh, if this is set to a list, then your row element should be set to li. So if you choose one of these, just make sure you put li here so it makes sense, okay? And then in class, this is going to be the class you get per row. If you add a number here, it's going to give it. A, it's going to count up, or so you know, what, or whatever row it is. It's going to output that number. So that way, if you're given a class based on the row number, you can just have your class be like um, something like that, and then it's going to be like one row, two row, three row. Okay. So this first, last, every nth. This can be um, if you have it set to zero, like it's the default. It's going to give it uh, first and last. Okay, just your first option is going to have first, and your last row is going to have the, the class of last. However, if you write, um, let's say, three, every third row, it's going to have one of these classes. So since we have this, let's put this third, um, this first and last. Let's actually save this out and see what it's going to do. You can also see right down here, you can add some zebra striping if you want, odd even, or whatever class you want it to be called. It's going to do sort of an odd even, you know, sort of thing. Okay. okay, so let's save this. And now let's in the preview. I know uh, this takes an argument. I know 10 is going to give us some stuff. So I put in 10 here. And here's our preview. Let's actually inspect this code. And then we can see exactly what our classes are. Okay. So if we get in here, you can see that this first one gets first, the second one gets even, okay, because uh, we had that even odd. So this is, gets first and odd second one gets just even and then remember we had every third it's going to count to last so then it's going to say last odd and then first is going to be even odd and then last even and it's going to continue doing this first last every three times this could be helpful maybe if you're doing um, a responsive site with a grid and let's say you had a class name like grid 3 alpha grid 3 omega so every like first and third one you wanted to get rid of that um, extra margin on the left or right, then you know that works great, especially if you're using an admin theme or a theme like Omega or something. Okay, so let's go back into our our view here. Oh, we are actually. Um, let's just scroll back up here. I'll close out of this. Um, now with the semantic view fields settings, this is where you have individual control over each field. 
Okay, so the last one is sort of the greater row by row. This is uh, your field. So your title, um, it lists each field right here. You have your title, your content, um, watch on YouTube. So these are the only fields that I have, but you can choose what you want it to wrap in. And if you leave it blank, it's not gonna wrap in anything because this video itself already has the embed code. I don't want it wrapping in another div because it doesn't need it. Uh, but where here, I want this watch, I want this wrapped in uh, you know, a div with a class of watch, I want a label, uh, but I don't you know, have a class on the label or anything. H4 for the title can be whatever you want. And then I've also uh, noticed that if you don't check the skip empty fields, sometimes you get an error. I don't know if that's a, a current bug with the module, and who knows by the time you're watching this, that may be fixed. But if you're getting some sort of an error with semantic views, you know, check this skip empty fields box and that should go away, okay? Okay, well that is semantic views. It truly really gives you a, like a, a more granular control over what your views are outputting so it doesn't have to export all this extraneous code and you have more control over what you're doing. Uh, once again, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment on the video. Hit us up at Twitter, Level Up Tuts. Let us know what you're thinking and thanks for watching.